Welcome. This video is to help you create the VEX VR spiral drawing activity. This is a challenging activity, but it's got some really nice and interesting features. And of course, it's going to really create a hopefully beautiful object at the end of it. As you can see, the little robot is right now is creating what should be a 24 petal spiral flower pattern. So it's just finishing up. If everything goes correctly, that's the endpoint right there where it should stop. At least stop the drawing and then continue off the pattern. So there's a pedal there. There's one more pedal down here. And then stops drawing and there you go it's got a complete 24 petal pattern and if you notice right here in my code I have a variable called petal and it's set to 24 if I change this to 12 and start again now we should get a 12 petal pattern I'm going to pause the video let it finish and then we start again. All right, so now it's almost finished with its pattern and it's gonna to come to completion and there we go, we have 12 petals. I enter the number 12 and 12 petals I get in this really pretty spiral pattern. So that's great. But there's a problem with this code, it's not perfect. If I change this number to seven, reset, hit play, Here's what happens. So I'm using an equation to make this happen. And I'm going to show you the equation. And hopefully you'll be able to come up with an even better equation or a better way maybe to perform this code. But at the least, I think you'll learn a lot uh, by duplicating some of the things that I've done here. So as you see, that's not what we wanted. Not only is the, are the petals not evenly distributed, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's not seven petals, and it didn't terminate at the same spot that it began. So the program falls apart at smaller numbers of petals, but the larger number of petals work out really well. So let me take you step by step through the process of how I got to this program. So we're going to start fresh. We have the Art Canvas Playground open, and we can expand that. And let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to need to drive, and I want to set the drive velocity to a higher speed. It makes it a lot easier to iterate the program if you're moving at a faster speed. 50% is the nominal value. That's the default. We're going to set it at a thousand percent and then for turn velocities we're going to speed those up too to a hundred percent well that's great now let's talk about making a curve one of the things that's different about this little robot than if you had an actual robot with you and you're programming it in your lab or at home is that you can't control the speed of the right and the left motors on this little vr robot at home you could slow down the right motors or speed up the left motors or both and make a nice curve. This little robot isn't going to do that. So how can we make the curves that I was just showing you? Well, let me show you what I did. If you take line segments, right? So you have a line segment and then you make a turn and another line segment and another turn and a line segment and you repeat them and you make those line segments smaller and smaller and smaller you'll end up with a curve. Here's what I'm talking about. If we drive forward 200 meters, millimeters, and we make a turn for the right of 90 degrees. Now let's, we wanna see what's going on. So let's add a pen. So we're gonna turn on a pen right here 
and we're going to drive forward for 200 and we're going to make a 90 degree turn. Hit play, and that's what happens. So that's not a curve. We need this thing to happen over and over again, at least more than once. And a way to do that is to use repeat. So if we go down to control, repeat is right here. It's going to repeat 10 times. And we place this in here. And now this is going to happen 10 times. But this is a really long line. So let's make this shorter. So now we reduce this down to 20 millimeters. And this is too big an angle. Let's reduce this down to 10 degrees. So 10 times, we're going to go 20 millimeters, turn 10, 20 millimeters, turn 10. It's going to happen over and over again 10 times. Reset, hit play, and voila, we have a little curve. Very nice. But what if we wanted to go a full 180 degrees? <clears throat> well, we could make our angle bigger. All right, so this could be an 18 degree angle. So 18 times 10 is 180 degrees. And there we go, 180 degrees. Or we could have done it the other way around. We could have said we want to repeat 18 times, but each angle is only 10. Still multiplies out to 180 degrees. Now what I'd like to do is make this loop around. So go down here, turn 180, and come back. So we need to drive forward. Well, if I put that drive forward inside of our loop, then it's going to be part of our loop. And this is going to happen 10 or 18 times. This 200 millimeter here is going to happen 18 times. So it has to be outside of the loop. So that the curve happens and then we drive 200 millimeters well, it will get us down here but we want another loop and we want to come back so we could take this whole thing copy it and paste it on down here or we could just tell it to loop and to go ahead and repeat again so that's what we're going to do we're going to repeat one more time so we put this repeat in here and we drag this repeat in there Now, we'll drive forward, we'll make our 180 degree turn, we'll drive south, make a 180 degree turn, and come back. And this is going to keep happening over and over and over again, 10 times. All right, both those turns. So the whole loop will happen five times. Well, that's nice, but we really don't need that. We really only need it to go around twice. Hundred eighty degree turn, straight ahead, hundred eighty degree turn, and then back. Now this is going to be too small for our spiral, so let's go ahead and make this eight hundred. All right, very nice. But our robot is on top of our pattern. We can't really see our pattern. So we should go ahead and drive the robot forward again. Get it out of the way. And we don't want that in the loop. We don't want this to happen over and over again. We just want it to happen once. And we don't want it to keep drawing that line. So we need to tell it to turn the pen off. So around we go, down we go, around again, and then back home. And then we turn off at the end and we go off of our part, off of our drawing. But this is not a spiral, right? So we're going to need to do some work to make this into a spiral. And it's not centered. So we need to do something about making it centered. We could drive forward first before we start our repetitions. 
and then this will be further up here. And probably half of this distance, right? If this is 800, then if we drive forward 400, and that's before we turn the pin on, now we're going to be more centered. All right, this is great progress, but we're not making a spiral yet. What if we didn't go 180 degrees and we kept repeating this? So we're going to keep 100 times too much, 10 times. And we need a smaller arc here. So either we could change the degrees, or for right now, let's just change this to 15. So it won't happen as many times. This repetition here won't happen as many times, and we should get a more open pattern than 180. Ah, so you see, if we go not a full 180, we get a more open pattern. And if we keep going, this can repeat over and over and over again. This is great. We're making good progress here. But we are going to need to make sure that when our robot ends, it terminates right here at the same spot that it begins. So that's going to be important. We also want to control how many pedals happen. And so we're going to need a couple of things called variables. So let's go ahead and look at variables. So here are variables. And right here is where you can create your own variable. So I'm going to create counter because we need something that can count for us. So that'll adjust the number of repetitions. This 10 here, we don't want to have to change it every single time. We want that to change itself. So we're going to tie it in with a counter. Also, we want to control how many pedals there are. So we're going to come up with a variable called pedals. And we'll click Submit. And now we have this variable called pedal. And we have another one called counter. Like I said, we're going to need an equation here to adjust the number of degrees depending on the number of pedals. And that's what I want to talk about next. Let me show you the equation that I developed, and you can try that out or develop your own equation that might even be more successful than mine. So this is what I began with. We were going 180 degrees to create that little loop. And then when we reduced the size of it, we created a more open pattern that could repeat over and over again. So I decided I need to reduce it by a certain amount of degrees. So I'm dividing 360 degrees, the distance all the way around in an arc, in a circle, by the number of pedals that I want. Degrees in a circle divided by the desired number of pedals. Now, that's great, but I also need to take into account how many times this little angle is going to be repeated. So in our case, it was 15. Uh, you could choose a different number. Uh, you could choose a different number of repetitions and not have the number 15. It could be 10. It could be 18. Uh, you could come up with your own value and come up with different patterns. So I'm going to divide this by 15. When you're using operators, there's always the issue of order of operation. You want the equation in the program to take place in the proper order that you want. Right? You want the divisions or the additions or subtractions or whatever to take place in a certain order. And so the simpler this equation is, the better. So that's why we're going to simplify this. I'm going to distribute the 15. And remember, the 15 is the number of times that that segment repeats. And you can, of course, adjust that for your own program and, your, and then make sure that your equation responds to that. So here we did it. We took uh, 15 and we distributed it. 180 divided by 15 is equal to 12. And then 360 degrees divided by the number of pedals we desire divided by 15 comes out to 360 degrees divided by 15 times pedals or 24 divided by pedals. So this was my final equation right here that I'm using 
to create my program. Now, like I said, it worked great at 12 and above, but if I put in a 10, I put in a seven, it didn't work so well. So you might be able to even come up with a better equation, but I wanted to show you how I derived the equation that I'm using. So that equation is gonna go in right here. Why did I create those variables? Well, remember, we don't want to repeat this 10 times. We want it to repeat based on the number of petals that we want. So we're gonna change this to repeat until. And you can see by the shape there, we can't just type in a number. We need to put an operation in there. So I'm gonna say repeat until something is equal to. So first I wanna say counter. So I'm gonna to go to variables and I'm gonna plug counter in right there. So see it highlights and I plug that in. And then when the counter equals the number of petals that I'm desiring, that's when the repetition will stop. Okay, so what are we gonna be repeating? Well, this is what we're gonna be repeating right here. We're gonna be turning over and over again. Okay, so still have this as set of 15. If you wanna change that number, you could change that in your equation. If this number 20 just affects how big an arc we make. You make this number bigger, you're gonna get longer line segments and you'll get a bigger arc, but it might be a little bit more chunky. Um, you make that smaller and you'll get a smaller, tighter arc. And again, this 10 degrees, this is gonna be replaced by the equation. So I'm gonna let you do that. Then we're gonna drive forward 800 and make our next arc. Great, but we need, and then we need to turn off the pen when we're done and then drive away so that we can see our spiral. But we're not quite done yet. Besides the equation being missing from this, there's something else missing. And that's, what are these values? Where, where do we enter the values for the counter and the pedal? So they're here. So we're gonna set, we need this two of these. One of these is for the counter, and we're gonna set that to zero. And one of these is for the pedal, and that's where we'll enter our value. So I'm gonna put 16, um, just as a number that I know that works. But now this still won't work because counter is set to zero, and then it gets to this and it says, is counter equal to? This is, that's what it's asking. It's asking a question. It's not setting counter equal to zero. That's what these two here do. These two set the counter to zero or set the pedal to 16. This here is asking a question. Is the counter equal to pedal? Well, no, it's not. Pedal 16, counter is zero. So this will never be true the way this program is written, and it'll never stop unless you stop it. So we need to change the counter every time we do one of these repetitions. So that's where we can do that right here. If we add this in after that drive, then every time it goes through this cycle, it'll change the counter by one. And then it'll come up here, and now counter is no longer zero, it's one. Is one equal to 16? Well, of course not. And it'll do everything again. It'll add one more. Now the counter is two and so on. And it'll keep doing this until counter and pedal are the same number. And then it'll know to stop. And this worked great for 12 and 16 and 24. Um, but again, it did not work for seven and five. You saw that seven that I showed you that they didn't end at the right spot. So you can try this and then go on and try different iterations, play with the equation, and see what you can accomplish. So as it is right now, remember, this won't work. This is not the same program that I showed you at the very beginning, but it's very close. So if you're paying attention, you should be able to produce the same program that I had at the very beginning, and then any other iterations that your teacher is gonna ask you for. Thank you for learning with me. I enjoyed learning with you, as Mr. Flip Physics would say. Have a great day.